to do like back flips and front flips she now, lies. and he wants to she? go on the bars. But See? yeah, she he's lied. way further. So it says. I can't even do a car wheel. Oh we! I literally tried last night and my arm gave out like midway through and I landed on my elbow and like one was like here and it was the worst. Oh, yeah. I mean like you said like can't even do a cartwheel and I'm like I'm like I get that because I, like, I can't like, land it successfully. I can get into the motion but I can't land on my feet. Yeah. I always fall, like, but I mean when you think about what a cartwheel is it's actually like I keep using the word intimidating but it's like an intimidating thing. You're like you're flinging your body like upside down. <laughs> you're flinging your for body. a very brief moment. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's a Scary. Just, just so you know, you are live. Okay. <laughs> well, that's yeah. And just so all the viewers know, we are sponsored by World in Conversation, so go out in the world and conversate. <laughs> that's what I will say every single one of these podcasts until <laughs> Sam tells me to stop. And so we have a real sponsor. This yeah, episode is brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> Squarespace. So now you're just like, Yeah, we would actually, we would Squarespace. be a good sponsor of Squarespace go because we have our websites on Squarespace. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, if you're going to say Squarespace, we have to now try to secure Squarespace funding. Right. Because, like, we can't just be advertising for them. Especially since we have two Squarespace websites. Oh. Also. Squarespace. And coming in late oh. to class. Here we are, last but not last but not least. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I should probably like get on the YouTubes so I can follow this oh, and see what the chats. Okay, so um, yeah, it's welcome back. We are live. We're live. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, we are live. Hi. You know, <laughs> let me also just say again, um, as we keep saying, social. we one after the other that. Um, um, constantly saying that we are uh, it's still piloting with our equipment and we're piloting with a kind of a sense of how it is that we want to do this particular Friday Audio afternoon podcast up. keep talking Sam. so um, so just say again as we keep what do you mean the audio is messed up is it just peaking because I can adjust that because that's all it sounds like to me we are it is peaking Okay, and I'll go easy. Um, so anyway, uh, let me. I'll just. I'll keep talking for the moment. It is. Uh, Audio bars up. You'll be able to see it. if it's peaking. Let me know. Oh, um, right now is. I'm thinking. I mean, right now it's not going to do anything. It's no. Okay. Once again. Um, yeah, it's, it's like peeking into the red. We are. I'm just going to talk here a little bit as we adjust the equipment. But understand the um, that we're using some of the same equipment that we use on the live stream, but we're also using some other equipment so that we don't have to keep carting it back and forth. And so it's we're we're having to adjust in two different very two very different environments, um, working with all the technology and the stuff that can be this take it down. Take it down. Like that? Yeah, it was just right for the yeah, I got yeah. So we are um, g just constantly having to adjust in these very subtle ways. Um, but give us a couple more weeks, and we will kind of notch this thing, thing up to the level at which we feel the class is going. You know, we've been working on the class for four years, and we've been working on this podcast for four weeks about four weeks actually four well it's five this is hours. the fifth episode <laughs> fifth episode but it's like we but we don't test any we just come in and set it up and we try to work it out as we go along but um so interesting classic i'm just going to kick a few things out and then y'all can well let's jump. let's introduce our guests oh yeah yeah all right say hi peanut <laughs> I mean, all of well, yeah. I mean, all three of I you. I guess, like, I guess, start with Joy since Joy's a lead. Make sure you're talking in the mic, cool. though. I'm Joy. I'm hitting the buttons back here that makes all the images change to Sam's face, to Jeff's face, to our faces. 
I'm Emma. Um, I'm the self-appointed tech apprentice today. <laughs> I'm Dranisha. I'm a director for Social 19, and I'm just here to give my opinion. <laughs> And, and, and I read are, and yeah. I read our ads. So listen, but next our yeah, ad. ads. <laughs> <laughs> but Emma, you but you to, to be clear though, you are an employee at World in Conversation. That's yes, I, like, I didn't just like walk off from the street. Yeah, that's true. she's not random. We love her here. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, okay, and then we have Sick Pig, who's what's up. American. I shouldn't really call you that because people. I, every time I call you that, then I would have to explain why. Yeah, it people is. get confused when you say you that. You have, have to, to look at <laughs> his last name is Ham and Ill, and so just in my insane mind, Air Force, sick pig. Uh, Air Force. just came up with sick pig. <laughs> so cool. But someone that owns that Twitter handle, so unfortunately. Oh really? Yeah, they do. I don't know that up. So we can't uh, really take that on in a more serious <laughs> way. Um, but going to couple things going to class yesterday um, it w you know what happened with that class is I had been thinking about it all all week actually I I thought of it at some point in the summer just a, a very different kind of way of talking and what I was going to do was um, ask um, do it later in the semester when I built up a little bit more trust from I'm gonna say this out there and then I want to hear what you, you you all have to say about it um, when you know you have to build up a certain amount of trust with certain with groups of people who are in the room and people who are watching the stream so one is a certain people expect me and the class to have a very strong liberal agenda and to be pretty biased actually right you just expect that, right? It's a race relations class. We're at a university. Um, the the standard of understanding that it's a popular class. So, you know, if if I was like really uber conservative or something, we wouldn't expect the class to have 800 students enrolled. It we would expect it to be pretty small, right? So, um, the 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 assumption is that it's very liberal. So I have to really kind of bring people on board who have a little bit more of a conservative bent or at least they people who want to be more moderate in the approach they want to be more fair-minded you know to cover different ways of seeing the world and i and because i'm a man I, I there are ways in which women need to be like i don't know, just have a sense that i you know that i have some understanding of what gender issues are right so that's an, that's something um because i'm white they're naturally I then there's an entirely different constituency in the room of black and brown people who are saying, okay, where's where's this guy coming from? Like, what's he saying? And 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 this is, you know, these are it's a large population of people that don't have one single view of the world, right? But nonetheless, right, it's valuable. People in the LGBT community, people who are not Americans are thinking, okay, I'm going to take this class from this guy, this American guy, what's he, what does he know about the world, you know, kind of thing. So in the begin, the first few weeks of the semester, I'm always trying to, I'm, I'm managing and balancing, reaching out or making points to various groups of people to, as there's almost like a, um, like an undertone or a subtext or way there's a messaging that's happening all the time that I'm aware of, much more aware of in the first few weeks than I would be later in the semester when there's a certain amount of trust in the room and then I could just, you know, I could make an anti-Trump joke or something and, the, and conservatives in the room would, late, I could make it later in the semester and then conservatives would have a better kind of a sense that of where I was coming from or whatever, or laugh at it, you know, whatever it is. Normally, but, normally you say that it's just low hanging fruit, but you haven't said that yet this semester. Just the fact that like, yeah, you make fun of everybody who's in office. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I do. Right. And so students, they, don't I mean, I can't, when did I take the class? 20? Yo, Obama was in office when you took it, when you took it. Yeah. Yeah. But that was so long ago, and I can't like go back to the recordings because we can record them back then. But you, but you know, I I make lots and lots of comments about the Obama administration, and before that Bush, and before that Clinton. I mean, you know, back when Clinton was president, oh my gosh, it was a field day. Right? <laughs> but people now don't know that, right? So if I make any kind of comment about the government or whatever, people assume a certain thing. Yeah. Um, 
but so I'm so as I start a semester, I'm very aware of the ways in which I need to kind of bring people on board so they don't shut down, right? And and it's very it's 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 ch and it, that people will say, well, why do you have to do that? Because it's just the facts are facts. It's like no, facts aren't facts. I can choose from lots of different facts. I can look at I can look at you know, I could teach about police brutality from a police perspective with lots of facts that are true and real. And I can teach about police brutality from a, a victim's perspective or from a, per, the perspective of someone who doesn't really care and doesn't really think about it. And I use three different sets of facts and they would all be true and I would just slant it a certain way. And so people who have this idea that you could just, I could just present the information as it is have never actually taught in, in at the subject matter, you know, anything, social science, humanities, anything, anything at all, my God, physics doesn't matter. So, um, so anyway, these classes, I'm, I'm balancing, right? And so like yesterday, the, and I'm going to, I'm saying all this, and then I don't want to get maybe hear some responses. So in yesterday's class, um, when the, the gentleman said that what he said about the two black women, the white guy saying that about the two black women who sounded aggressive and, you know, for me, I, I, this is just awesome material for me. This is an issue that it's great. We can talk about this. And, and what's fascinating, and, and I will say this, it's because it really, I was struck. It was the first time it happened that I was so completely comfortable and I wouldn't say happy, but I would say just ready to work with that. And um, but even though the, the room, even though there was a lot of laughter, a lot of energy, a lot of whatever, there was soup, so much tension in the room at that moment. But not for me. I was 100% calm because I knew like, okay, this is just another thing that we get to talk about. And then, and then it's really deep. And if you are... Uh, um, Thinking of sociological address, if you are a black woman and Joy and Darnisha, you can weigh in on this, right? It's a lot different for you than it than it is for me. So I can say like, okay, I was calm. I wasn't calm, meaning like that I didn't see the intensity of that or all the implications of it. But I was calm in the sense of saying, well, this is a huge issue, and there are people in the room who feel who really struggle with this, like really just. Lots of us, not just black women, but lots of people who are um, but with this portrayal of black women as aggressive and just the positionality of the whole thing. And so, well, it, it's it's really it's so important to be able to walk into that. So anyway, when he said that, what what, what did y'all? What were you thinking, like? I thought what she had said afterwards, her rebuttal afterwards, it was just like, yeah, that's exactly where the conversation goes every time we do try to have a dialogue. It's that, I don't know, why people are real sensitive and you can't express your truth and it'd be like, oh my God, did you really just have to say it like that? You hurt my feelings. And that was really aggressive. And it's like, no. She was like, I was being really diplomatic he asked us a question and this is my response that was not being aggressive <laughs> it was my response to the prompt uh-huh because it wasn't like we were talking and then all of a sudden she was like and you have white <laughs> uh -huh. you have white supremacy yeah, it's not like she was like screaming at him like she was just calling me like well the way that i see what you're explaining to me and it's not like she was talking down or anything she was like as calmly as i'm talking to you and as soon as he said well that the way you said it was kind of rude. I felt like it was kind of aggressive. I was like, uh, like this is gonna be a whole other thing. Yeah, I like the class's reaction though, because the, I think it's something we mentioned last episode of how diverse the semester, this class is this semester. Like we're trying to find the white people in the class. And every semester there is a section of like very animated black people particularly not just any people of color, but black students. And so when that had happened, there's like 
this section that's a favorite of mine and this girl is she's always on the edge of her seat like okay what do you have to it's say it's like she's waiting and for something and i had put her up on the jumbotron when the girl responded oh, and then really? that's when the class yeah. had a pause. <laughs> that's what that's what the she class was on the screen. <laughs> she was on the jumbo screen like yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure she was on like her exactly. Snapchat or something recording what was happening. Exactly. That's oh, how we all felt. That's amazing. <laughs> I yeah, wonder like, the class that... was screaming, I was in the back, like I was like, Oh my god, I'm sweating, like this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was happening. That's funny. Oh, it's, that's oh, that's awesome. Did that, did we catch that on the stream? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did because she yeah. was on the yeah, yeah, exactly. I put her on the jumbo and live on the stream. Uh, kept her up and it was panning the class, clapping. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it so was awesome. great. <laughs> Wow. But honestly, I feel where she was coming from. I get people telling me that I look aggressive and mean on a daily basis when I don't even say anything. But come on, you True. wear pink all I'm the time. intimidating. <laughs> I, I work as a cashier over the summer. I legit have people coming up to me like, you should smile more. You're too pretty not to be smiling. I had my manager tell one of my supervisors, she's like, she looks upset or something. I was sitting there just yeah. straight faced. This is my face. There was nothing wrong with me. Like yeah. I, for, for, for me, it's uh, I just have RBF. Yeah, that's honestly, I yes. think that's what it is. It, I could be wrong, but it's the basically just like the perpetuation of like, oh, angry black woman over there, don't want to talk to her. Right. I think so, you know, go ahead. For today, those kind of comments and the aggression thing, it's more to it than you just saying that my tone was a little bit off to you. Mm-hmm. It, I think it has a lot to relate with the history of the depiction of black people and how we are treated as other or animal or less than human and we're dangerous. So when you say I'm aggressive and I'm not, it's just like you really fear me or for you looking at me and for some reason I, I'm i just not on the same level. I'm, I'm some type of danger to you. Well, you intimidating. Yeah. And it's just like... Well, gives, that's where it, the frustration comes from or the reactions right there. like mm-hmm. that in class come from mm-hmm. yeah I, I, I like uh, that makes me think about how it allows me if I can see you as aggressive if I can see if I can link it to aggressive dangerous something right it allows me then to feel justified in your one downness so it allows me to feel justified in treating you in a certain way because, well, but you're dangerous, right? So the, that that idea that um, in the all throughout slavery, the, the depiction of Africans as being, you know, not just less intelligent and all of those factors, but actually really dangerous, allowed white people to say. Well, I guess this is why we need the chains, right? This is why we need the beatings. This is why we need to keep all of these Africans in their place. Because if they rise up, then this will be a problem for us. <laughs> seasoning is what it was called. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You say seasoning? Yeah. Yeah. And so. <laughs> well, it's like the conditioning and the physical. Yeah. Right. Okay. I got it's you. just like yeah. you get it. I'm going to do this until you you know you try anything that so, you ask. So one of the things that for me, you know, in the class and in, in the I really wanted to go the, toward that, but what I knew was that in order to do justice to that conversation, mm-hmm. to really do justice, we weren't going to do that in 20 minutes. No. There, there's no way, and so that's why I kind of set it aside. And also, I, we needed time to look, just kind of sit with it and come back, but. Also, just the very thing that you just said, right? It's also white privilege. My ability to be able to be angry, to not smile, just to not smile and not have someone say to me constantly, hey, you should smile more. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, and, that, and I don't know what that is. People do that. I, don't know. I can't make any kind of face without someone going, oh, like, you look upset. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm sitting here with a straight face. Yeah. If I'm upset, then you're going to know I'm upset. Like, if I'm angry with you, you're going to know. But if I'm just sitting here not doing anything, that doesn't mean something's wrong with me. Hey, hang on. Look into the camera with it just a straight face. I feel like I'm about to start smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it's crazy, right? So, yeah. <laughs> People, like, end up meeting me and, like, oh, my God, you're so nice. You're nicer than I thought you were going to be. And I'm like... 
What did you think? Yeah, well, listen, this is the position out. This is what, you know, Lori's been talking a lot recently about positionality. And this is really the, the that's where we're at. And this is what I mean about the subtlety, right? So when I, in the beginning of class yesterday, when I was talking about how I, I saw, you know, racism, I saw the inequity, you know, everywhere, right? I was always looking at it, I was always talking about it. But actually, when I started to, be more open to contrarian views to the ones that I had. The irony is that I not only saw something in those views, but I actually saw the greater the how racism and the inequity that we see and sexism so on is actually deeper and more profoundly entrenched than I even imagined before. I was just staying at the surface level of inequality in numbers, you know, all that stuff that we talk about on a regular basis. I'm like, no, this is so deep. So, Well, Mike, uh, it was brought up magic, I guess, 14. Um, I, I think I know the answer to this, but why didn't we talk about both sides? Like, we really were mostly talking to the people that were on the table, which, if you didn't see the classes, or the people who were more so arguing in favor of the fact that there is white privilege rather than the people on the other side. Well, the people on the other side who were sitting down were just representatives, so they didn't have anything to say. They weren't up there to say anything other than to just give data about their lives. So I didn't, um, I didn't want to. We didn't need to have a conversation about the the fact that there isn't white privilege. I mean, there is white privilege. That's just. Well, you, like, we should talk about that because there's people who believe that it isn't even a thing. Well, we will. Well, I will talk about the. Okay, so one of the ways in which say yesterday that's that's my reasoning for having the the poor the lower class white woman up there so you start talking about white privilege it's like is this thing that that it it doesn't exist yet that's my reasoning for having her to say it doesn't exist in the way that you think it exists because if you're going to talk about white privilege you have to in, talk about it in a way that actually includes it, it, it accounts for the existence of huge populations of poor white people. And so it's, so it's not this thing that is, that doesn't mean the white privilege doesn't exist, right? But it exi you have to talk about it in a way that accounts for that. And you have to talk about it in a way that accounts for wealthy black and brown people, which is the reason for the woman on the other side. So you can just talk to the white guy in the middle and it's really easy to say, like, oh yeah, you have white privilege. Look at all these ways in which white privilege. Well, yeah, that. But you got to fine tune your argument. That's like when I said to the one woman, "Hey, you're walking on a razor's edge right here because you're being you're being a little bit. The argument is a little bit simplistic because you're because you're not able to account for hurt the woman on this side and the woman on the other side of him. So that's I think where. So that's what I mean. Like I don't even. I don't even entertain the idea that white privilege doesn't exist. Of course it exists. That's just like like right-handed privilege. Please, so you go in that classroom and the, all but 20 of the desks are for right-handed people. I mean, just cars, everything. It's just set up for right-handed. The world is set up for right-handed people. But, but that's a – and so the world is set – in this society is set up for people with – uh, lighter skin tone, right? Lighter skin pigmentation. That's just a given. The question is, how much and to what degree and where does it manifest? You know, like male privilege, right? Um, to what degree does it manifest in how and that sort of thing? That That's the conversation. It's not whether it exists. So, Emma, were you going to say something? I was just thinking about how, like, that kind of, like, that interaction because I, I really just only watched that interaction like a couple minutes ago but it seemed like exploring what the two people could have said to each other d does deserve more time because it's like that that's clearly wasn't that's why i have an issue with just hearing like we need to hear both sides because let's clearly it's clearly not just two sides like yeah. looking at each other with opposite beliefs it's like yeah. There's one, there, you know, there's one person, there are people who seem to share the same perspective, white privilege exists, they both said it. Like, no no one's denying that exists, but there's clearly something more complicated that they're reckoning with, and I feel like that does deserve more time. Or, right, or the, certainly that he was reckoning with. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, and, that, and so the issue, 
and I maybe get some. Well, you know, to air that out. So there's something he's reckoning with just in the way he's hearing it. So he's like the person in the store with you, Darnisha, who says, you should smile more. He was like, wait, hang on. What do you mean by that? Do you say that to everybody? You just say it to me. And they would say, that woman or that man would probably say, well, I would say that to everybody. But the data show that actually you wouldn't. And if we follow you around, when we do tester studies, we see that, you know, you know what? It's probably an 80 to 90% chance that you would not say that to everybody. And so um, that's the given. That's what people don't who don't study this stuff don't understand about about it right so on one hand we had it what he's reckoning with is some is visible strings that are touching him in ways that he doesn't see and doesn't understand mm -hmm. and that had those two women been white he w would not have said that probably and so i mean what she's reckoning with is this her position in the world and positionality that people just aren't willing oftentimes they don't see you know we don't we don't really get it it's you know It's intense. It's kind of like um, whenever people say that, oh, I would, I would have done that to anybody. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, you know the show what or uh, what would you do on ABC? <laughs> it's like, oh well, if we would see discrimination happen, we would all, of course, we would all step up. But then when we actually would go and and film you, quote unquote, we would see that 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 isn't the case. That you just kept eating your meal or you went to the other side because you were uncomfortable rather than actually doing the thing that which you say everyone would do. Yeah, yeah, and those are essentially, that's a, a television program of tester studies. Yeah. And so you control for everything except one thing. And we just see, like, yeah. The, the one that I used in class, I stopped. So I used to use a lot of videos in class and I don't anymore, but one, or the, that's, you know, what would you do one where we, you know, they have a, these, you know, a couple of white kids stealing a bike and not just, just cutting a lock off at a park and taking the bike and everybody just walks by and watches them and like, okay, got it. And they're, you know, just in jeans and their hats turned backwards or whatever. And then, you know, they, they just sit there kind of all day long and just doing this and they watch with the cameras to see how many people stop. Right. And then the next day it's black kids and it's just within five minutes seconds say that people seconds. are stopping and just saying is that your bike what are you doing and everyone then they interview some of the people and everyone is just like no i would say this it doesn't matter that they're black it's like but yeah i know you think that but it does <laughs> We literally saw you yesterday walk yeah. past and not say anything. Yeah, well, so let's say it's it's not them, right? It's not the same people. It's going to be different people. But when when the camera is set up all day long, it's you're getting a random sample mm -hmm. of people, and so, and that's that's what you know. So many of us just don't understand about the ways in which our actions are shaped by factors and forces outside of our control that are shaped by race, and gender, and class, and so on. So. Yeah, so I, I will, we will absolutely go back to that and probably we'll do it on Tuesday, might as well. But we have a guest on Thursday who's going to be really intense. That'll be really interesting. Oh. Nice. Special guest in class. Ooh. Not even I know who it is. But in all fairness, I don't even know what we talk about in class until the day <laughs> of. I don't even know you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really, really kind of. Striking. What do, what do we have? Um, okay, hang on. Why, what is this Jamali saying? Hey, Jamali, we're going to have you join the stream at some point. We just couldn't do it today because we we can't get the volume uh, to work properly. To work properly, but we're going to get the right cables. Yeah, you seem dope. We should definitely talk. And he just went through the hurricane. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, he was in Florida, so I don't know if his uh, particular oh, yeah, area did, but that. like, did, say that. did you yeah. did you see that uh, what happened with uh, Trump in the hurricane predictions? Yeah, oh, <laughs> like, oh, uh, this, I'm not sure how true it is. <laughs> no, it's very true. I followed the whole thing. Listen, this is what I mean about Trump. Uh, hey, Jamali, by the way, what you're saying about white privilege isn't. Uh, we'll get back to the white privilege thing, but let's talk about the hurricane for a yeah, hot yeah. second. I, I like what you're saying there. I completely agree. Um, so the idea was that Trump, at some point in time when he started talking to the hurricane, 
about the hurricane, he, he someone inadvertently gave him a map that included the projection that it might go up into Alabama. And so, you know, but that had been, you know, five or six or seven days earlier. And um, so it showed the hurricane kind of going up there. And when he then talked about it, he mentioned at some point, you know, it was sort of a... I think he tweeted in, at it, too. Yeah, it was in kind of going over the Bahamas, and he included Alabama. And then um, he, someone corrected him and said actually that they, you know it's changed right the, the projection is not going to touch alabama at all and then he said alabama again because it's you know, sometimes his brain he gets stuck on something you know and uh and Isn't so that all old people though they yeah in a way <laughs> wait did you say all old people yeah, yeah. all old people do it dude well okay i i'm 59 by the way dude so, you're ancient to me <laughs> i heard sam's birthday was this week so we didn't sing happy birthday to you in class no, and i'm not going to sing it now a group of students did i caught it we did to the oh, yeah. selfie. hey so but then trump what they did was they showed a map and then someone on with trump's team with a marker put a black mark on alabama you know it was just this guy is he even called it somebody on fox news kind of called him out on it and be like dude come on and Trump was even tweeting at the, the tweeting at the guy on Fox News for being an idiot because he questioned he dared to question Trump's assessment that it was going to hit Alabama. I mean, it, this guy. When I said yesterday in class, look to the guy who called him an, an a hole. Right? I said, listen, you can't. You can't first off, you can't do that. It's like you're not. That's not going to slip by in here. But secondly, that doesn't describe him. There, there's a word out there that describes Trump. <laughs> it hasn't been created in the English Some, language. Somebody yet. somebody said it on the comments. <laughs> yeah. They said you're looking for the word con man, but it's beyond con man now. It's because it's like there's a narcissism. There's a there's a he's also very funny. He's like this. I mean, it's I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to talk about character. Trump, character. We'll go yeah. to that. Character is a nice way to say it. <laughs> yeah. It's a way of saying it. <laughs> I, I can't I can't believe I can even laugh about it because but I do because if I didn't laugh I would just be curled up in a ball. Life so. is too long not to laugh. It's too short. No, it's too long not to laugh. Think about it. There are 365 days in a year, and the average person lives to be about 70. Hey, so here's uh, Jackie. Well, Thin the average American talking I'm about. I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm. I don't have Wait, real facts in front that, of me. Does that sound too long? Yes. Sure? Too long? It does sound too long. Life is way too long not to laugh American? whenever you can. Yeah, I agree with, with our you. diet. Well, it's like, I think the, the, I think the I mean. actual age is around 74 to 76. Really? Interesting. I mean, my grandma turned 80 next week, but, like, that's my grandma. Interesting thing in my family, there's never <laughs> been a Hamill male that's lived past 65. Only Actually, only one. My great-grandfather. What you say? None of, oh, none of the no male in my family has lived past sixty five except for my great grandfather. Do not be the statistic, Jeff. <laughs> I mean, regardless, I'm going to be a statistic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. Let's come back. Let's no, come back. I'm like, like, live long and prosper, Jeff. Don't die <laughs> at sixty five. Hey, so uh, Jackie Tham G K is Malaysian, but we're now overseas in Japan and for says, a business trip. Let's talk mm -hmm. about cultural difference between East and West. Um, you know, so we, it's funny that it's interesting. Well, we haven't touched on that in, in class this semester. And last semester. Did we? I feel like we did we just a dating show, but I don't remember ever. Yeah, we did. We, yeah, well, we tried to do some new things. But actually, so this semester, there's a woman coming in um, from Korea who is coming here in november to do an interview so she'll be a, a guest here because okay um but we'll, we'll we'll have to do it on a wednesday we got to work this out we got to get into a schedule but she would wants to do an interview so she's a, a personality of some sort i don't know but she watched uh some a video that a couple of videos i did on bts um the, the super group I was making <laughs> and uh joy this is why we love you anyway it that we will be really digging into east and west it around that time and we have so many a striking number of people of asian ancestry in class this semester so um we there are lots and lots of issues that we're going to be getting to um Ooh, no. 
would be nice is because there's so many different dimensions of Asian culture. Yeah. Between Korean, Chinese, Japanese, the Malaysian, Cambodian, whichever. Indonesian. And I think they're so different. I think for at least here in our demographics, a lot of the conversations are between Chinese students and Korean students. Probably not even that much of the Japanese students. But I do think that they, it would be interesting to have more than just like an Asian black and white yeah. conversation. I mean, we don't. Even, I don't think Malaysia would be the part of that conversation. But it is interesting to me because my best friend is Malaysian or Indonesian, and they're really kind of similar. So we have two Indonesian students in class this semester. Oh, we do as well. Yep. Two Indonesian. We, you know, what's facet? What's interesting to me is, and when I've been, as I, you know, a when I've been in the Middle East and B in Asia, is just getting out of the Western American centric or Euro centric understanding of the world to really see the the complexity. It's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's not. We're not talking about just Japan and Korea. We're talking about a, an immensely complex one third of of the known of the planet, right? And it is. The, the overlapping complexities and the relationships between cultures and people and the ways in which entire exchanges or entire overlaps are happening day after day after day with groupings and populations of people that we don't even think about. Like, you know, we have like, say, here in the US, we have a relationship with Mexico and what we're dealing with, with trying to figure out how to address border issues. And so here's, you know, one population and then we include some Central Americans and so on. And it, we, those become these really sort of dynamic relationships, and then our whole world revolves around those relationships, as if that somehow that is an an archetype of a of a cross cultural exchange in the world. But when you just go to the other side of the planet and realize nobody's thinking about any of that, like there's nobody thinks about Mexico and Canada and you know the U.S. they think about, but. It, the, the realities of the exchanges are just so completely different. And so for me, one of the things in this class is I get, I get stuck often, and that's part of what this podcast is, I guess. It's like we get stuck thinking about the issues that pertain to most Penn, most Penn State students or just the majority of students or relationships here. But increasingly, as, no, as people are watching from other areas of the world, they have m things that are very different for them, like interests and so on. So mm -hmm. we have to be addressing those. But your best friend is Indonesian or Malaysian? Indonesian. Yeah. He talks to me a lot about the histories of the kingdoms and the differences or how, how they are today, how they're still um, a little back or at least the older population, a little, I guess, their own type of conservative or traditional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um the complexities in their different type of dialects like there's a dialect that his mother speaks with her sisters and brothers but he doesn't understand it at all mm -hmm. um if i'm not their own little like hierarchy yeah. or their i think he said there are like seven kingdoms and about how many islands make up indonesia their beliefs with like afterlife Many. and stuff like that religion the, yeah, they're they're the largest muslim population percentage in a country malaysia or indonesia indonesia, indonesia. and and the, i think if i'm not mistaken uh, over like a hundred languages or so i mean mm -hmm. so many languages it's just so and so you just talk about the kingdoms right you just mm -hmm. think about the immense complexity with these and how it still plays a role today it's with like so, knowing your last name like the caste system in yeah, India yeah. how that still plays a role today and so and so you think about how many people we're talking about right like how many human beings are really we're addressing and like over here that's not even it's not even on a the thought. table yeah. yeah yeah and so I think part of what I I mean my goal is always to reach out and touch make draw this like web of relationships between things but you know we, we kind of we, we I and and I I too often will fall back on what's right in front of me instead of what's outside of me so mm. um, yeah like for example I will listen to news from you know Kuala Lumpur or something right I'll just find a, a news station 
in English and just listen to it or you know from Cameroon let's say or wherever it might be I'll just turn it on on my iPad on my phone I have an app that I can just tap into news from anywhere in the world or radio channels and I'll just listen to what people are saying and uh, and just see what's what's the new what are they saying like what's the local news right so in you know a, a, a radio station in English outside of Kuala Lumpur right what what are they talking about what happened today you know like what, and for me it just allows me to transport myself into another location that feels really cool something that's kind of crazy to me to think about too is like oh hello um it's it's like the the ways that s students from indonesia for example or just around the world kind of like tell their stories or like simplify or try to explain the complexity of their just of where they come from to other students because like i just having like facilitated dialogues with a lot of international students in the past it's kind of it's I've noticed that like there's a way in which you might have to like develop a kind of script about like a really simplified idea of what's happening in my country so that you can understand and you can feel attached to it and I'd just be so curious to hear like wait so like what how did how is this for you in a non simplified way like yes. I would love to hear just more about that you know because you, you must have to just have like kind of a okay you know, even just me going abroad, like you kind of have to have a script for what people want to hear unless they dig further and you're like, oh, okay, so you want the real story. Like, let me tell you that. Yeah, my real my real impression of things, mm -hmm. right? Like when you were, you were in France all summer, so that, like how many conversations did you have with people where you touched the surface of the U.S. and Trump and U.S. culture and so on? But, right. But man. Like you don't even want to go deeper than that, honestly. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, it's, hard, it's hard, right? It's difficult yeah. to do that. Whatever, like just trying to explain Penn State culture would be so so hard. Hey, so can we just touch? Um, yeah, listen. So two different people have talked about the trade war in in Asia, right? What Trump has really started. So just to, if I could just respond to that. Um, so I've been reading about and taking the perspective of not just business people in Asia, but also, and, not, and this isn't just about China, right? This is the, the, the global economy, really, but, but average consumers, and really taking the perspective and saying, all right, wait, hang on a second, how does this affect somebody you know, living outside of Shanghai? Or, again, in Vietnam, right? So let's, and, uh, Whoa! This this trade war is have it just has huge implications for lots and lots of people, and in, there's a certain spiraling effect that's going on that we don't we don't think about. And so when you know you we might think about Trump because of what he does about X, Y, or Z, the administration or whatever. But man, these things have profound implications for people all over. And if you don't read, if you don't follow the stories if you don't watch i don't know some short four minute clip of a marketplace you know in you know korea or japan or wherever you want to be and follow the implications of this thing you're not gonna you just aren't gonna see it and it's hard you know so i don't i don't when i talk about trump i don't say i don't talk about it lightly i think these things are profoundly important you know, every administration in the U.S. and then elsewhere in the world, right? But it, it prof profoundly impacts people. I don't take that lightly. Um, and, and you know, there'll be just a new normal in, at some level. But um, Hey. Yeah. Um. I wish I had something. I wish I had something that I could add to no. th this, but like it's just, it's a lot, and and with us being more thought of as a liberal chorus, I'll say something that's very conservative, in which was made last semester with that one African American student 
um, where he talked about the trade war, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Listen, China has been stealing from us for forever," right. and it's like, "Yeah," and we allow them to continue to do that, and we need to either do something to stop them or we need to start following the same way that they are because we all know that they're going to be the top of the world pretty soon and how is that going to interfere with the american economy and because again if you if let's say apple for instance has like a, a factory in china part of the agreement that i've heard is that the chinese government has 51 percent or something of the rights to that building so they make They'll, they'll just copy most of what Apple's doing and take it to one of their Chinese companies. And okay. then they're able to lower the prices because they're not trying to bring it to the United States and make a ton of money. They're trying to just sell it and take yeah. com take money away from United States companies. Okay, so here's what I would say to that. Um, I would say, A, it, nothing that, you, that we talk about or is that, that's sort of a public narrative or that is that shows up on the front page of a, the Wall Street Journal or New York Times or whatever um, is true in and of itself, right? Like my my stated assumption and sort of understanding life itself is that nothing if it if it's a common held belief, like say the China has been stealing products forever, right? Okay, maybe so, right? Maybe, there's some truth to that, obviously, right? But I don't hold it just as what is it prima facie or just the assumption i don't hold or i say but what else I'm, there's always a what else because the in this particular case we we watch if that's true and we, i'm just throwing i'm the i'm always the skeptic so i'm, I'm always wondering mm, okay what's the other side of the story what's another part of the story right in this particular case it's like well if china's stealing that many things from us how do we benefit because in some way we benefit from it the people who are losing what they're losing are benefiting in some way because otherwise we would stop it it's and not everything we wouldn't be able to stop everything right that's the first thing the second thing is what are we stealing because or what have we stolen because when I then, as I read, you know, if the, you know, the Financial Times coming out of Seoul, right, or the coming out of China, um, the analysis is like, wait, there's a critique of the U.S. and the unfair practices of the United States. And so what, are, what have we stolen or what have we done? And so there must – somehow there's a, there's a relationship here, right, and that with the fact that we – uh, you know, continue to really dominate the global economy and the global politics tells me that mm, we got a certain amount of power that um, very sort of those kind of simple critiques or that, that critique, which there's some truth to it, right? But there's always something else, man. I mean, the thing that we get from China is cheaper labor. Well, yeah. that's that's the benefit of us going over there and sending jobs over there for I'm just going to stay with Apple because Apple is probably the most notorious for sending almost all of their products are made in China and so we send all of our information over there to, for them to make it and then they steal it and the reason we can say that is it's it's a thing to do with their culture like and well, I would have to talk to more people from China and more people from Asia because Obviously, I'm learning all of this information in America by Americans, but it seems to be that there's a culture of stealing and cheating is going to allow you to get further and faster. And if you don't do it, not only are you going to be behind, but you're going to be seen as an idiot. Because that's so that's the perspective, right? That's per the perspective from the U.S., right? right? And then the perspective from the East is that the U.S. culture is a culture of cheating and you know unfair competition. It's the same thing, right? So. But you know, if we don't, if we don't, but how would how so how would they see us as the ones who are cheating and doing well, all this? Well, because it doesn't take much just to sort of back up a little bit and then move forward and and um, the, and I I don't yeah I don't want to I don't want to go into that like just because I don't I don't we'll move on to another topic here and also I don't want to reveal all of my ignorance all and because I haven't really studied it in a deep sense all I know is that's a similar perspective from their side and if that's a similar one from their side it doesn't mean it's true but what it means is 
I need to explore that. It means right. that ours isn't necessarily true because they're really thoughtful people on the other side that are saying like, yeah, kind of similar thing. And so, you know, we could we get cheap labor from all over the world, right? So, man, why there? Like, what what is it? There's something else happening. There's, it's just, yeah, pithy, short, clear black and white statements are just there's always more complexity behind them, which makes it for me makes it really difficult to say anything about it, you know. Um, so, yeah, in terms of Trump standing up to China, it's like, well, I, again, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not a like uh, a, a shill for the the Chinese, or I'm not um, taking that side. I just don't. When I, I just do not follow headlines. There, you know, it's like when you read an article, like a really. Uh, uh, a piece I learned this from people in the CIA by the way the Central Intelligence Agency in the United States and years ago a couple CIA agents we had a, a, a conference here and so I had the opportunity to spend time around about 10 or 15 of these folks who had been retired and they were here and they and there weren't very many of us we organized this conference there were only about 30 or 40 of us there so it was really fascinating an opportunity to to really hear them and one thing they said that was so important is if it reaches the front page of the Washington Post the New York Times or Wall Street Journal anywhere in the United States and it has to do with national security in some way or economic security the truth is going to be about in the second paragraph second from the last paragraph and it's never going to be on the front page it's always going to be buried back in you know like page 19 or something right and so you can just sort of skim through until you get to that. And then that's where you're going to start to see what, what's actually happening. Everything else, if it's about national security, is just smokescreen, right? And I thought, oh, my God. And then I started reading according to that, right, according to a critique. And I started to see it. So the whole Chinese argument is similar to that. And mind you, this, this is, it's just so immensely complex. that. Um, anyway... Uh, I think it's interesting that uh, we haven't said – there's been like twice this semester where you get to the point where you're almost going to say, and that's why Donald Trump has gotten elected in the fa like in, within the conversation of the class. And I think that's important for, for this comment section here is yeah. the fact that the reason that Donald Trump – with right, white privilege from yesterday's class, the reason that he got elected was because people who are poor and white are like, where's the privilege that all these people are talking about? And that's part of the reason why he was elected by these people, also to try to help rejuvenize some of these plate, like some of these industries that sh that are outdated, and because they believe that he was going to lower taxes for the middle class. Yeah, those are the reasons. Well, the poor and white thing—it was, you know, it's, it's actually the voting pattern. If you if you look at the the the, the Republicans and Democrat voting patterns between Obama's two elections and then Trump's election it didn't change very much. It's just sort of like slight, you, you really only needed to shift a very small number of people. So most people who voted for Trump were just Republican voters, the same people that voted for, you know, that's who it is for Bush. And, right. And, and most people who voted for Hillary Clinton are people that just are going to, we're going to vote for Obama or Hillary or anybody. It didn't really matter. And so it's just mo shifting a, a few folks in between. And, and you know, Trump, uh, it's, yeah, it's the pithy statements. Anyway, listen, um, um, so how about this here? I, here's something for Darnisha and Joy. Um, and Emma. I have a question. Back for the, the China trade thing and Trump. Do you think that regardless of who's in office, that this would still be something that's occurring? Is it standing up or is it just riding along with China? Because, of course, it wouldn't be happening if there wasn't a benefit and if this is something that people are like oh of course China's been doing this forever and they're only going to get bigger is it not just one just a big game of capitalism or just for yeah. money for f currency well uh, yeah and power right and so is it just 
okay, we're just playing into a system that we're not going to try to break down or scream and try to say that China is stealing, but we're just going to officially, as a government, as a market, slide into the same performances that citizens can't really do anything about because at the end of the day you're still going to buy the product yeah you can rave and riot in the streets as much as you want like with the thing in china with yeah. the laws trading between taiwan or like yeah. how the, the hong kong and, yeah so mainland, it's like awesome question I, um i have i have a response that is not nearly as awesome as your question but I think what I would say is that um, if you go back for the past 20 years when our pre-2008 depression and then post-2008 and just look at the expansion of the economy and the creation of wealth that has happened, not only in the world but here in the United States, the, the unprecedented expansion of wealth, that just the world, we've never seen anything like it. Well, all that happened during the time in which supposedly, right, in which people are arguing that, you know, China is growing and stealing trade secrets and doing, engaging in unfair practices and so on and so forth. And once again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not defending the Chinese at all, but I'm just taking a look at this, right? So, so things are expanding and growing and so on. Well, like somebody's benefiting because things are and most, the vast majority of that expansion and that wealth that was created went into the pockets of the of a very tiny minority of people in the world, right? So, who's benefit? So what? If it's what, what suddenly where Trump's the, the savior that's going to fix the entire? Gonna, what's he going to fix? Was he going to go back thirty years when and we wouldn't have the expansion of wealth? Like, what are we talking about? So. I think that's, I think you do, they're just, my mind, all I do is I just ask lots and lots of questions. I don't necessarily have answers to questions, but it just leads me to be able to say, you know, that's actually a question that I would like, that I need to answer, right? Like, so what? Like, what? What's, so some people, some people gained, have gained a lot. And so this is the thing, right? Um, anyway, hey, um, are you talking? comment that was on this on the comments yeah yeah so that topic definitely came up in class last semester and i was like that makes sense um should i read it directly so people know what i'm talking about yeah okay so sure, go ahead um so the um paul g read an article that looked at trends for online dating websites and asian males and black females were considered the least desirables of like everybody on the app which looking at when i look on my like dating stuff and i look on one of my friends dating stuff who she's white passing she's not white but she basically could be white you can definitely tell the difference between like the responses i get and the responses that she gets and you can see that like not as many people are into me as they would be into her the asian male thing i can't touch on i am not asian or male but <laughs> for both the demographics of people. A, it's the understanding of the people, whether it's culturally, or even if they are Asian or Black American men, it's still culturally um, an approach, just like the same vein of us being depicted, Black people as being seen as intimidating or just, you don't know how to approach a person, anyone that's other, and I think apart from Hispanic groups, when we talk about the demographic of people, we have white and then we have people of color, black and Asian apart outside of Hispanic. And I think as a minority, of course, the statistics would show that way. If a lot out of all those numbers, 60, 70 percent of the entire count are majority of white people. Mm -hmm. So the numbers will play out that way. If that's accounted for I still just think it comes down to understanding or the depiction of people so with black men it's intimidation aggressiveness mm -hmm. or just like 
some type of fear implemented behind it. With Asian men, I think the depiction of them is not, is a lack of masculinity. Mm -hmm. Um, From how we see them, whether there's a conversation with K-pop and their beauty standards Mm -hmm. and how they decide to carry themselves, that Mm -hmm. for the Western mind may not be the most desirable or translation for a masculine man. Yeah, at this point. And then there's a stereotype Mm -hmm. that Asian men have small dicks that women don't like. The D word. She just dropped the D word. Oh, was I not? Um, (laughs) Reproductive organs. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think that accounts for if you list if you, dating because if you flip it because you have another class when it comes to the wealth distribution yeah. it's completely flipped apart from yeah. I think the numbers yeah. were Asian including Indian I think yeah, where yeah, Indians yeah. kind yeah. of qualified Asians, as Asian yeah. were more making more than white men yeah. two hundred than white men almost. than so However, here, it fell down. So here's a thought for your generation: the the you know the, the sex side probably matters for other folks. I don't think it really does. But what matter? I think what I would, I, I think what you said about like skin pigmentation is just fundamental, right? We know when we everywhere we turn, the darker the skin pigmentation, the more, the we just see differences in behavior and attitudes toward people with darker skin big pigmentation and lighter skin pigmentation, right? Until you get to the extreme light, and for so for your, people of European ancestry, right? You don't you don't want really white white skin if you're of European ancestry, right? You want more of an olive colored skin, and then and then in Asia, of course, you want but you want really really white skin. So I mean, it's. Ah, but anyway, basically, no one's winning. No one's winning. No one's really winning. Yeah, like you have white women online painting themselves with like peanut butter color foundation. <laughs> you have like darker skin black women using bleaching products to make themselves look light skin. Yeah, no one's winning. Yeah, no, no one's, one's happy. Yeah, no one yeah. likes. No, no we, one likes themselves. Yeah. No one wants to admit. Well, it. listen, you know, and you took just look at you know skin. Um, creams and so on it's a billion dollar industry so we yeah. just got to keep people really happy sun tanning and skin pigmentation yeah, all of it it's just it's which huge. the i i always bring this up but the bleaching cream that you had me try for a little bit yeah. your freshman year did not even work nah so I, I, don't see the I think it was old <laughs> okay so no, i just bought it in <laughs> ethiopia <laughs> okay so freshman year when i was taking soch um we were talking about like the white like perfect the, cream we were talking about skin lightening cream, but I forget the exact conversation we were having. Yeah. And he's like, you know, someone should definitely try this. And I jokingly went up to him after class and was like, yeah, I'll try it. He's like, all right, so I want you for a week to just like a little section on your arm where no one's really going to see you, just like right I there. Said I said the whole like, semester. It wasn't the whole semester. Uh, I wanted you to do it, it the was whole for like, semester. It was for, I think it's for a good couple weeks. Well, but you, nothing happened. I think I even got darker and not <laughs> So... <laughs> Dude, I, I also no said I'd get you a date with a white guy. You still have not gotten me a date no, with a white guy. Dude. I will, though. I don't make it happen. Have you had a date with a white guy? No. I've been on dates with Indian men, two Indian men, but I've never been on a date with a white guy. Before. All right, we'll work on that. And grass is always greener. That was what I was thinking yeah. earlier, too. It's always greener on the other side. I saw a GIF, and it was a person with a fence and they would hop over the fence and whatever side they weren't on was always the grass was always greener and I was like that's a perfect thing for what we go through in life yeah there was okay there was a Nicole I was listening to Nicole Byers podcast and she said the grass is always greener when you live in a dumpster and that's that's I think that's my favorite one (laughs) what? what? that just made me think of it (laughs) yeah when you're in a trash situation anything seems better that's true (laughs) hey um I want to... Oh, man. Okay. Uh, Sham, Shamshir Muhammad is saying, can we? Can I talk about Kashmir? I uh, don't know what that is. Uh, I, you know, I want to... I'm going to talk about Kashmir. We actually have a couple students in class from Kashmir, and I was thinking that... I don't know if I can do it in class be, because too few... It just won't really resonate with a lot of people. Um but here, 
Maybe I will in a couple weeks. Not not today, but I absolutely will talk about cashmere because I've been. It's one of the. It's something I have been following. I've been following news directly out of cashmere, um, and you know, again, listening to news and listening to programs and hearing things that are going on, and it's and coupled with the you know ultra national the rise of kind of ultra nationalism in India and and with um, Modi and so on. It's really important that we talk about that because it is a it's extremely important issue. Um, so I will talk about it and frame it within the context of of the things that we need to say um, uh, regarding Pakistan and and Afghanistan and India. So. What do you say? I have no clue about Kashmir. Yeah. So Kashmir. So when the, the Brit. So it all goes back to the British, right? When the, it always just does. The, the quick thing is when the, when the British. Um, decided that you know they were ultimately going to pull out of India and then create the state of India and create Pakistan. Well, not create India, but you know, put boundaries, set the borders, around, set the borders, and set the borders with, uh, create the state of Pakistan. Um, there was this landmass in the middle that's that the, the what is Kashmir, and the, the, with, and the Kashmiris, of course, the people of Kashmir. I mean, are are the, you know the. The, the various indigenous groups of Kashmir are going back thousands and thousands and thousands of years, right? So this isn't like this isn't a new area, in many groups, right? But what happened was in this particular land, um, as it turns out, in the way that the that the borders got settled, a the vast majority of the of the people of the land are and are Muslim. And a smaller minority are Hindu, and the people who are really controlling the the resources and controlling politics and controlling the, that world are the Hindus, the land, the big landowners and the power brokers and so on. And so what we have is then this land, that, and then they decided the Brits decided, well, we're not going to we're not going to support giving it to India or giving it to. Pakistan, we're going to leave it as an as an almost like an apolitical um, unit, a non-country. So it won't have you know binding status. I don't think in the UN and so on and so forth, right? Um, and then since then, there's th this kind of attempt to figure out well who's going to control it and who's going to own it and, and the leaders of the region. Who are they going to who are they going to align themselves with, India or Pakistan? When you have so many of the people that align themselves with Pakistan because they're Muslims, and so many of the, the elites and leaders align themselves with India. And so it's just a recipe for struggle and a recipe for civil war. And that's okay. what we see. I think I heard about some of that because there was a conversation with Priyanka Chopra. Chopra and a yeah. that she made, and I think... I don't know what it was that she was speaking at, but then um, someone had called her out like, so, you know, as an Indian person, why do you support, I forget what the tweet was, yeah. or what she hashtag, or what member she had added, or something, but basically saying she supported this thing. And I think the person's argument, or their uh, them being upset came from, I guess that would support war, or some type exactly. of aggressive approach towards the, By the Indian government. people. Yeah, she the said, Indian because I'm, I, I'm a nationalist, I support my government. I support uh -huh. my country, uh -huh. right? So, Yeah, cool. And so what essentially she was saying by saying that, and, and she's sort of stuck, right? Because she can't say, I don't support my government, because then, you know, that that flies in the face of such a large segment of the, of the Indian population that feels more of an allegiance with nationalism in India. Uh -huh. And she can't say, I support Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So she could say, I just support nonviolence. And she could stay right there in the center and supporting nonviolence. Right. Okay. And that, but, but again, that would make a lot of people and the nationalists in her own country angry. So in a way, she was sort of stuck to say anything. And uh, in fairness, but what she did, she just took one road and said, oh, that's a really bad idea. And the people who support peace, are obviously saying, are you watching what's going on in Kashmir? Mm -hmm. Are you aware of this? Do you know what's been happening for the past 40 and 50 years? And are you aware now of what your government is doing? Right. So if you are, maybe you would step back and say, 
Mm, that's maybe not such a good idea. I was wondering, I don't know if any of these relate, but if it doesn't seem like it's that big of a, not not that big of a conversation, but A, if the representation isn't there, and if it's not a specific topic that you think the students won't quite understand or whatever the context is or how it resonates and if you combine different global conflicts like if there are any yeah. Sudanese students any Cambodian students you know Liberian like because there's so much of those type of conflicts yeah. going all over to make it one big dialogue and the chain of events how they're affected what people are doing hey let's do that on uh general particular scale of those conflicts and yeah, how it is that they that. come to be and the effects of them across the globe. Or, wh or what's driving, what's fueling them. Mm -hmm. So right now there, there's a, in South Africa there, there, there's an anti-immigrant backlash in South Africa with all the immigrants coming from the north um, northern countries that are coming into South Africa for work right? and of course there's the poverty in South Africa and the unemployment rate in Swan leads so many South Africans to just, just say, look, you're coming and you're stealing our jobs, right? Just so it would be imagine, you know, poor people in the U.S. who feel like they're Mexicans are stealing their jobs. And But the riots in South Africa are, have turned violent. Many in, immigrants are being killed, houses and communities destroyed and burned and people, you know, sent fleeing. It makes what what's happening here with Mexican immigrants just be like nothing, you know? So, um, but it would be really interesting to, as you're saying, pick out these different areas of the country, maybe have students who could just, just come up and maybe not talk about it, but at least we could draw the parallels between all the different conflicts and all the different things that are happening to see that you certainly address this idea, the voice that's in the room, the, of, of more liberal people with a more of an anti-government or anti whatever slant that say, this isn't just the United States you know this idea that the United States is the most racist country in the world that's only because you never studied any other countries you know so th there's more violence here than anywhere else it's like well that's because you're not studying anywhere else you know so um, so that that would be cool let's do that for sure hey we're, I know we're running we got to tear down the equipment emma do you have anything you you know you're anything final you want to say as our as a guest we jumped around so much i don't know <laughs> if i could find a thread we don't have a real thread for no this I'm, no we will though we will we're just right now again we're no just it's cool kinda. no not really it was just it was nice being here hearing your conversations and i love the engagement with with the people online it's been really cool yeah, yeah. it's it's nice to hear what other people have to say because sometimes I don't know what I'm talking about and some of these people actually do. <laughs> oh, I'll say something because someone brought... Oh, this is like totally out of left field though. I was just thinking <laughs> about like something I think is a really interesting social sociological phenomenon that I feel like we don't talk about as a sociological phenomenon that much. But someone brought up like, let's talk about theology. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like... I was going to go to that. And I was thinking about like this isn't theology but like everyone's obsession currently or, or pre preoccupation with astrology recently has mm. been like totally blowing my mind because i mean i'm t i'm constantly checking my you know whatever's going on in my like app and everything and i was like wait everyone's doing this like this is a generational like phenomenon where we're all just like getting meaning i mean not all of us it's kind of definitely picking up but yeah, that and just like holistic values. Now everyone know how to use crystals. Right. Everyone, <laughs> everyone want to talk about how much they meditate, or the things that they do that is just like seventies all over again. Uh -huh. With seventies like and 80s, eastern nineties style, like everyone's dressing like there are a lot of Stranger Things now, <laughs> and it's like. Hey, we you were born in 2003. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of the kids now are. Well, like, I mean, and a lot of that's also Eastern, like with the meditation and mm. kind of, I'm, I wouldn't say slowing down of society, but just like 
a different pace than what we're used to because i mean in the west we're always moving fast and i know somebody who moved up to northern pennsylvania like potter's county area and they were like it's so slow here Mm -hmm. like just the pace of it all is so slow so that's interesting and with the astronomical like the is that it whatever the astrological astrological signs like it's funny because i do notice more people talking about it but i don't know i think i know like four people who actually check every day Mm -hmm. it's just it is starting to pick up of like oh what are you or oh you're a you're a gemini screw you because you're two-faced and i'm just like oh like i've read articles where it's like housing just like we have to defend against housing discrimination based on zodiac sign because i read this one (laughs) article that was like um i don't think we can have scorpio energy in our living situation it's very we have to protect the sacred like virgo energy or something like that and i was like wait that's like that has like tentacles into other parts of society and i'm like i don't even know what to think about that it's just interesting hey <laughs> okay i actually i have a lot i don't of trust virgos actually <laughs> Man, I, just know, <laughs> I just know my sign there's a whole it's so complicated now what sign are you what i'm a sagittarius born, yeah people born, are like what time were you born where were you born what up, position like, was the sun in what's your rising sign what's your moon sign what's this what's that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, check it out. Talk I think to Sam and I. I, th- I think Sam and I. We have the same moon sign. I have mm. a lot of water signs. My friend. Mm. We'll, we'll I know. If I, the like only person. Water, air, earth. All, like, all right, what are listen. we? Air, what are we? Benders. The only now? person yeah. whose yes. moon sign I know is Lori's, and because it fits perfectly. It it's water? It's Aquarius. No, her. It's Aries. Aries. Yeah, Aries. Because she's. I'm Aquarius. Hey, listen. We 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 need to get out of the room. But oh, yeah. we we I I have a, a a sociological perspective on astrology actually <laughs> that I have developed that we could talk. Of about. Of course you do. Don't. Um, actually, a lot of yeah, I have a lot of thoughts on it that I've developed. Um, not to say is that what, so that's what you're that was yeah I needed to advocate for that I was okay. like I've been thinking about it. All right, maybe next time. <laughs> okay. Listen, uh, thanks. Well, again, I want to remind anybody who might have be, still be listening. We're, we're still piloting. We're still trying to get a format down. We're just working it. We're, we're, um, but we will, we will we're, I feel like we're sliding into something and creating something. So thanks, everybody. Emma, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Darnisha, thanks for Drink your Drink your water, people. Be hydrated. And Joy, thank you. You all should be saying thank you to us because you're really running the stream. So, <laughs> and Jeff, thanks for coming. Thank you. Talk and be our floating heads, Jeff and Sam. All right, Darnisha, leave us with our advertiser. All right, guys. Now remember, we're sponsored by World in Conversation. So go out in the world and conversate. All right. Thanks, y'all. See y'all on Tuesday. <laughs>